like a new person had emerged from me. I could see myself in a perspective that I've never seen before. No inhibitions, no worries. For the first time I felt like I knew where I belonged and nothing could stop me from being there. Nothing and yet everything felt real. The world was underneath me, around me, above me, above me, above me, above me, above me. After a little hiatus of Live Free Radio, welcome to the apocalypse, everybody. There's been a lot that's been happening in the world, and it's been absolutely amazing. You know, again, as sometimes it looks negative, you know, a lot of chaos and some sort of unbalance signs like this are always indicative of change. You know, you can look at these things with either a negative perspective or a positive one, neither of which are incorrect. It's just a matter of your preference. So it is a beautiful day. It's starting to become winter again here in Colorado, and it's still absolutely gorgeous, and I love it. Um, so we have an amazing show, and we have an amazing future shows that I'm very excited to give you guys. Now, just a little bit of a heads up, I'm going to be playing a little bit of the newer music that I've been making, as well as some really amazing kind of ethnic bass music that I always love to play, and, um, and uh, so here we go, getting right into it. So, just a little bit of a recap, I've talked about meditation, I've talked about spirituality, I've talked about sacred rituals that you can do with certain psychedelics which should not be taken lightly, it should be considered sacred, of course. If you don't know what sacred means, watch some of my previous videos, because I have some information a little bit more about that. Talked about synchronicity, <clears throat> fractals, syncretism, awareness, consciousness. This is some pretty amazing topics here. So, but today, what I really wanted to talk about is the true power that we all really hold within ourselves. It all starts within ourselves. Now, if you're kind of confused, it's okay. You can still watch the rest of this video, but it would be nice to reflect on some of the previous stuff that I've done because it kind of goes a little bit in order to get you kind of caught up on what's really going on. But, um, Essentially, we all have some absolutely phenomenal and amazing power as human beings that we all hold within ourselves. I think a lot of people don't actually really see this in themselves. You know, you have a lot of people walking around kind of like they're zombies. They're dead inside. And, well, I suppose you could say instead of dead, you could say asleep. This would be something that people can definitely see and relate to where they have chaotic lives. Life for them isn't exactly as good as they would like it to be. You know, they're like, man, you know, all the, you know, if I could, if I could live in a movie, I would rather live in Harry Potter land. You know, now it's kind of interesting because it's like we don't have Harry Potter land to live in, right? So why not live in reality? Well, it's because a lot of people don't think that their current reality is really that good. And so really part of what this episode today is talking about 
is that the the land of magic that we all really want out of life that can make your external reality absolutely amazing to live in is already in us that's our nature now there's a lot of studies that you can find again i want to reiterate i'm not the one that's going to be doing all this research to show you i will give you pointers for you to go do it yourself because there's a lot of crazy esoteric stuff that i talk about in this show but again i've done my research and you need to go do yours because even if i presented to you a lot of legitimate web pages and this and that like you shouldn't just believe everything i'm saying all right you need to go out there and find it for yourself question your own reality i'm not here to tell you what what the hell everything is <clears throat> i'm only here to show you that you can question everything that you believe and go out there and find it you know if i'm talking about the fact that you can consciously think of a plant and i guarantee you a hundred percent fact that that plant will <clears throat> certainly <clears throat> it'll certainly interface with you just the very second you consciously think of it okay again don't take my word for it go find that research it's out there you know and the reason that i'm having it be like this sure i will show certain things here maybe on a web page and a little window here and that and that's amazing but that's not really what i'm trying to do and that's for a reason you know i know that i don't blindly believe all this stuff that i find or see right off the bat however if i see one thing over here and i see another thing over here and it looks like they obviously aren't talking to each other you know they can't all just be cohorting together you know conspiring together for something it can't be happening like that every time so if that's the case then the thing over here and the thing over over on the other side are saying the same thing it starts to build a narrative you know what i mean like with what's going on with uh, a certain bug going around uh, from 19 uh, coronal bug going around now when you really dive into it and I'm, I'm talking about not just listening to the mainstream media not just listening to any media for that matter go do your own research and you'll find out that there's something weird going on it's not like I'm just saying that go do your research like you should and you'll just start to see that there's this funny narrative coming out where you're like, wait a minute, not a lot of this really adds up to be what they're saying in the mainstream media. Not to mention Project Veritas exposing the corruption of the media. Now, how does this connect to the true power we all hold? Well, this is very interesting because I could bring up another pointer for you to go search up if you would like. Now. David Wilcock is a journalist who's a really amazing journalist. You can like him or not. I don't really care, but he presents amazing evidence, and he's the one who does the research that will show you uh, d certain scientists or different people. He's not the only one either. There's a lot of amazing people out there, like whoever did the Fall of the Cabal series on Bitchu and other places. You can search that up as well, Fall of the Cabal. And there's so many people out there who have done some amazing research that prove irrefutably that there's certain things going on. Well, one of these things that uh, David Wilcock, among many others, has showed me is that there's been research done a long time ago, a long, long time ago, by somebody who was able to put electrodes on a plant and do research in many different ways that showed us that just by you consciously thinking about the plant in any way shape or form the plant will pick up on it so for example you could be you could have the electrodes hooked up to a plant and be in another room and you could think about killing the plant and then the electrodes on the little machine will go absolutely crazy same thing for if you show it love Okay, this applies to animals, other human beings, whether they realize it or not, plants, everything. I wouldn't be surprised if something similar happened with the crystal. And this is important because just our very consciousness can interface with just about anything and have an immediate direct connection that has zero time dilation, which means it's instant. Okay, it's not like it takes a certain amount of time for the consciousness to get there. No, it's right away. 
So this is really amazing. Now this is just one piece of information that we can use. And again, if you go do your research on this, you'll find out that this is irrefutably fact. Ac absolute irrefutable fact that your consciousness can interface with other beings in an instant. Okay, if that's not a superpower, what is? You know, I grew up loving comic books. Stan Lee is really amazing in my eyes. You know, so far as I can tell, there wasn't anything bad with the guy. And he's a really amazing storyteller and has created some of the most amazing superheroes that children growing up have had the luxury of fantasizing about, you know, being, being for Halloween, you know. And a lot of these superheroes have extraordinary abilities like telepathy like mind power like like shooting spider webs that you can swing off of throughout the city you know spider-man um and a lot of this stuff it makes you wonder where it comes from because then there's uh the hulk for example who became a superhero much like the flash two different super completely different superheroes but they both became superheroes by getting exposed to radiation. Now this is interesting because what is one of the main things that puts out radiation? The sun. Okay, now there's a lot of esoteric spiritual stuff that you can go out there and find. I mean, I swear, all this is really Googleable. Where you can find out that the sun has a direct effect on humanity. No joke. There is on YouTube, you can type in suspicious observers and solar activity. And there is a scientist on there who's an amazing scientist, does amazing work on correlating solar activity and solar flare activity and correlates it to earthquakes on Earth. And he's not the only one who can do this. And ha they've done an amazing job about showing how um, solar activity correlates with human activity here on Earth. Now there's a lot of esoteric information you can find that will tell you that solar activity is changing us, changing our DNA, changing our abilities. And this is part of what I would call as being the new age of Aquarius. Now when you hear new age, I'm not talking about the CIA coined term blah 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 for controlling the masses. I'm talking about literally there, you know, the new age of Aquarius was marked by the conjunction in the sky um, December 21st of 2020 where Saturn and Jupiter conjoined in the sky and that marked the new age of Aquarius. Now this is important because this involves ancient prophecies that have already been coming to light much like you'd see in a lot of movies like oh I don't know the Matrix which has talked about Morpheus was all about the prophecies which come from sages and people who can really get tapped into that spiritual world, that energetic world. And, you know, I don't know if you can see the picture that I'm kind of painting here, but the fact is, is human beings have an extraordinary power that we all hold that's already inherently, fundamentally inside of us. It's just a matter of whether or not we can be aware of it, whether we can be aware of it and then decide to tap into it. Now, there's another person that I've been really, really enjoying learning from his perspective, and that would be Sad Guru. Now, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you might know who that is. And as of late, he has been going around um, traveling, meeting celebrities in America, uh, having a lot of amazing, amazing, amazing stuff to say that really, really resonates with me. And a lot of the stuff that he talks about is that we have these energy systems. And again, this guy is from India. He's a mystic sage from India. Really amazing dude. I like him a lot. I could just feel him. And, you know, he talks about energy systems that the human body has. That if we were just aware and perceptive of them, that it would really change our lives. And this is what's happening. And I believe that it's happening to everybody individually more so than ever. Because the age that we're going into marks an age, a golden age, that is the magical world that we've all dreamed of. Literally, it's the world that we all dreamed of. If you grew up like me, like completely hating the reality that you have, 
not being taught by your people be before how important it is to be aware of the inner world that's there for you to be aware of, like the inner energetic canals that you have to cultivate then naturally you're going to want to like see Harry Potter for the first time or Lord of the Rings and just dream of being in those worlds because it's so much more fantastic than what you have. Well, where it seems like we're going happens to be a world where not only is it like those worlds that we've all dreamed of, that J.R. Tolkien dreamed of, that that the Harry Potter world and everything um, with J.K. Rowling, how she dreamed of it, we're going into a world full of magic. Not only that, is it's absolutely far beyond more amazing than even these worlds that we that those amazing writers dreamed of. It's really amazing. Now again, don't take my word for it. You need to go out there and question your own reality. Look inside yourself. Take a long, hard look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, like, who am I? Who am I really? Because when you start to really dive into it, you'll realize that there's extremely amazing correlations between probably who you are and amazing fundamental correlations in, in other things. I mean, like I said, don't take my word for it, but seriously, dive into yourself and find this stuff out. Because I don't know why, but I've had a lot of amazing experiences myself that I just can't explain other than to plug in the theoretical narratives that I that I talk about in my podcast. You know, I don't just get this stuff from my ass randomly, you know. I, uh, I put a lot of this stuff together by questioning everything, just doing exactly what I'm telling you to do. And then next thing you know, it turns out that there's this amazing thing being drawn up. And I'm like, hey, I'm not the one that's doing it, but it's happening nonetheless. So long story short, the true power we all hold. You know, if you're a child who somehow was able to remember your past life, hey, go look that up, dude. There's amazing examples of children who are five years old, three years old, six years old, eight, 10, 12 years old. Maybe 12 is a little old there. But a lot of these kids have had the uncanny ability to remember their past lives. Okay, the, a lot of them even come from America. Okay, this is an Eastern philosophy. Car or uh, reincarnation, karma, things like that. Well, to me, it's been irrefutably proven by science. Science meaning you can take a theory, you can do experiments that prove the theory or not. And reincarnation, to me, from what I've seen, has been irrefutably proven. So if you don't believe in reincarnation, I don't know what to tell you because I've, I've seen the proof. Not just in myself and my own experiences, but at the same time, you can you can find thousands and thousands of cases of children remembering their past lives where it's irrefutable. You can't argue against it. Okay, so a lot of this stuff has been proven by science. The you know the fact that our consciousness can connect to uh, other beings immediately just by thinking of it has been irrefutably proven. The chakra system has been irrefutably measured and proven by scientists. And that happened in, I believe, 1976. There's a book, um, I don't remember the author, but you can Google it, called Wheels of Light, which is basically the definition of a chakra. And there was this psychic medium who is uh, this female psychic medium who got a few scientists on her side to measure and record the chakra system the energetic system and it this was in the mid 70s guys okay and a lot of this stuff is suppressed because of a lot of ignorance not just nefarious beings out there controlling the world like that happens too but also you got a lot of people who are just kind of stupid who just don't have the heart to to change their very reality now the power we all hold okay i've explained a little bit here and there about about that Go do some research. There's amazing information in this podcast as well as my other podcasts that you can utilize to really start. Like, I'm not here to present one amazing thing. I'm here to kind of talk about everything as a whole because that's kind of what I'm here to do. That's part of the work that I'm here to do for everybody is really show everybody that all of this stuff is very interconnected into one big unifying thing. 
And the future involves unification. That's what we're doing here is getting back to God. Now, the next bit that I really want to talk about, since we've established that, that human beings have this amazing, uncanny power that we really all have, that everybody knows that they're just too caught up in their own ego to learn about, please learn about it for yourself, is the utopia. What is a utopia? For a lot of people, a utopia can simply be defined as essentially a world that is the optimal, best kind of world that you can possibly think of that we all live in. You know, you can imagine uh, if you've ever seen the movie Elysium, ignore the earth part, but you have Elysium up there. It's like a habitat that they've made because the world was dying. But when you look at it, it's very beautiful and beautiful buildings. Everybody's in peace there. Everybody is healed. Nobody is sick. Everybody is in harmony. Okay, that's like a utopia. Now, the reason this is important is because when you go look into Eastern, Eastern philosophy, you have the yugas, which are these big cycles of Earth's cycles that we go through that cycle in and out of hard times and then back into a golden age slowly back into hard times back into the golden age and we have to cycle in and out of this to burn our karma and go through all of these karmic cycles that hopefully the end result will lead into balance and harmony on earth and i have reason to believe that what's going on right now in time is the last one we are going to go into the golden age and eventually have harmony again like there once was. But I think that this is the last time. I think that humanity is going to make it this time. No matter how bleak it looks, you know, it's always got to be dark before the light can happen. Guys, the truth has been everywhere. Even in every movie. I mean, for crying out loud, even in Batman, Two-Face, in one of the Batman movies, himself even said the dark is first and then before the light can happen. Like, watch the movie and Two-Face himself even says that. Like, why is that in Batman? That's a very strong philosophical statement. But you know what? This kind of truth comes out in movies all the time and it makes you wonder how. How has this been such an integrated part of our society, even in movies like Batman? You know, it's very interesting. But I want to talk about the utopia. Everybody can dream of their own. Everybody can dream of a world where everything is in harmony and better and nobody is sick. Nobody has cancer anymore and all this stuff. You know, you're not being controlled by these evil people across the world. Okay, everybody kind of knows what that is in themselves. They can think of it, right? Well, I want to talk about some stuff that we really need in order to get there. This is important. So rules and regulations, education and subcategories for both of those. So this is what I'm going to be talking about next. And rules and regulations. I don't really like the word rule like that because it makes you think of authoritarianism. But you know what? When it comes to harmony and balance, there are laws in place that dictate only within those laws you can have harmony and balance. Okay, so... One of the rules and regulations that you can say that will help determine a further utopia for everybody, which goes hand in hand to say uh, balance and harmony, you're going to need to give people love. If you give people love, then the only thing that there is for you to return to get out of life is love. Okay, so if everybody on earth just put their goddamn ego aside and put all their hate about different things aside and just gave out love, as hard as that sounds, if everybody did it, then the world would almost immediately come back into harmony. And then you would be living longer. You'd be living hundreds of years, probably thousands of years. You know, life is conducive to balance, harmony, love, because love is the fundamental creational force. You want to say what God is? Well, partly what God is, 
is a fundamental force. And the fundamental framework of that force starts with love only. Period. And so if everybody understood that and just really just wanted a better life for themselves and did everything in their power to learn who they are and work on themselves and realize that all they really want to do is put that love out there into the world, then everybody is going to receive love back, plain and simple. Haven't you ever had somebody do something nice for you? Maybe you stubbed your toe and you were walking and then you fell on your face and they helped you up. And they were like, hey, it's all good, man. No worries. Nobody's judging you. Like, just move on. It's all good. You know, and they were there to help you. And they don't, you don't even know those people, maybe. Like, haven't you been helped by maybe one time or two by, like, some random person who was just nice to you? Like, of course. You know, and this is what we want more of. You know, all this negative bullshit just comes from ego. And... And, you know, a lot of that ego in the world has been facilitated because a lot of those people who are egotistical, me included, um, <clears throat> really just don't understand that there's more out there. There's more out there that we can really pick from and eat like a fruit from the world, you know, but we need to sow the seed that we want to grow and nurture it. When, when you want to grow plants, whether you want to smoke the plant or whether you want to eat the fruit from the plant, you don't just put the seed in and then shit all over it and then not give a fuck or none of that, right? No, you plant the seed and you give it love and you grow and you give it what it needs. Food and water and sunlight and you watch it grow and you talk to it. And you say, hey, come on little plant, I want you to grow because I want, I want your life to thrive so that you can feed me. That's a perfect example. Guys, the truth is everywhere. All you have to do is be perceptive. Like, like naturally, in order for us to eat food, the plants like wheat and corn and everything else that we get different food from, onions, potatoes, you know what I mean? I love Novalox, right? You need onions and avocados and tomatoes and capers. These are plants for that. Fish. In order for that to happen, you need those lives to thrive. You need to give them the love that it takes in order for the life to thrive in order for them to give you what you need in return sustenance this is a perfect example of what i'm talking about you have to love these things in order for the life of them to thrive once they're thriving they can then give you what you need to sustain yourself this right here is what i'm talking about if everybody did this but not just to their pet not just to their plants not just to their gardens but to each other Continue to cultivate that in, boy, I'll tell you right now, that utopia is right there, right there, and it's going to happen. Right now, as you're listening to this, or as, as this is getting recorded, I'm telling you right now that what's going on in the world is rough, totally rough. I get it, but this is necessary. This is the veil lifting for all of us to finally see and expose the truth for what it has really been all the negativity needs to be acknowledged so that way it can get purged it needs to get it needs to get erased but in order for it to get erased it needs to be acknowledged and understood okay you got these people controlling the world blah 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 i get it um in some of my next podcasts it's gonna go all up into that um be ready for that because it's a doozy but i'm not gonna go into all the little details it's gonna just be the, the basic outline Okay, this is us looking at external problems, understanding them, and then after they become understood and really seen and acknowledged, only then can they be handled. The solution is always there if you understand it. But this is us seeing an external thing in order to handle it, right? Well, this applies to us internally as well. We need to do that above everything. I don't care how many people are ruling the world. If we don't understand who we are, we can't understand that we actually have the power to conquer them completely. Like, I don't care about these people ruling the world. They're weak. They're weak little children compared to the power that we really have. And so, so the veil is being lifted, right? That's how come you see certain people that are corrupt being exposed. Project Veritas has been doing a very good ex uh, job of that. And really, that's an example of the truth. But apply it to yourself. Again, apply it to yourself. If you have a problem where your life isn't really that happy, you're actually angry, 
or upset and you know more than you really need to be and you can look inside yourself and go man it's really not that good my life eh, could be a lot better this is most people okay this is including me and I love my life but that's because I started looking at myself and doing what I just said with the people controlling the world but do it with yourself look at yourself inside look at yourself in the mirror and just go who am I have I been doing the thing that's been bad? You know, a lot of people go, you did this to me. Yeah, you did blah, 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 you, you, you. But in reality, 100% of the time, the reason you got somebody doing something bad to you like that is just because of how you already handled something in the beginning anyway. You know, if you had nothing but love in your heart from the get-go, nobody would be mad at you. Nobody would be giving you that. Everybody would, you know, you see what I'm saying? So you got to realize that you're your own fault. It's not that person who screwed up and hurt you. Maybe that did happen, but really it's because of how you handled it in the first place. Like, sorry, hate to break it to you guys, but you know, the reason your life sucks is your own fault. It's not just because people suck. It's not just because society sucks. Even though society these days does suck, it needs to get acknowledged. I get that. But in reality, it all started within ourselves. You know what I mean? The first time that you just took a shit on somebody, later on, you're getting your karma. I mean, it's, it, it is what it is. So if we can just learn to understand that, hey, I messed up, then you can realize the truth. And then when you go about life, you'll start to see how you reacted to something was actually the problem in the first place. And then you'll start to go about life differently. And then after that happens, you'll have an awakening and it'll start to, it'll be painful, but that's a beautiful experience because then afterwards you'll start to be free. You're, you're going to be lighter. You're going to start to feel that there's much more to life that you can actually enjoy. Go out there and do it. You know, this is, this is a necessary thing we have to do. This is a rule and a regulation that is required for everybody to do individually inside themselves in order for this utopia to happen. Okay, this is necessary. Okay, so what did I just do? I taught you guys. I taught you guys to go inside yourself and look at it. That's that's education. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about, um, yeah, you need, you can study the laws of harmony, which, it, well, you know, one of them I just explained. You know, a big problem in the world is per perpetuated poor education. Our educational system here on the Western Hemisphere is, I'm just going to say it, fucking garbage. Okay, garbage. Horrible. And everybody knows it. I grew up hearing things in the news about all oh, the teachers, union, people need better education and blah, 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 blah. And it's been suppressed. That's one of the biggest problems that we have is that nobody cares about education that much to do something about it just because they're all caught up in their own life, which is why it's necessary to go back to what I just explained and look inside yourself first and start getting your shit straight first. You know, go look at Jordan Peterson. Study him because what he has to say is amazing for everybody, not just young men. And what he says is you need to get your house straight first before you start talking about fixing the world's problems. Like, that's necessary, okay? That's exactly what I just explained. We have these problems in the world like poor educational systems. And yes, education should be free. We should just have it for everybody. And that can be possible, but the only way we're going to get to that utopia is to look inside ourselves first. Make your own damn bed first. Clean your house. Clean your inner house. Clean your real house, for God's sakes, first. Before you go out there trying to do you know, these complicated world issues. So education, education is a big deal. It really, 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 really is. And <coughs> I'm here to tell you guys that, look again, don't take my word for it. Hear what I'm saying in this podcast. And you can take any number of different sections of the stuff that I've been explaining. You don't have to do it all at once. You can rewatch this podcast there will be an integration period after this talk is done where you can listen to some music and watch the visuals and just lay back and think about what I said because it's called an integration period. That's what I'm calling it. And, and educate yourself. Think about the stuff that I'm saying in these podcasts. 
Go out there and uh, as you go about your daily life, think about it. Think about it. Don't take my word for it. And if you need to, Google it. Put that purse down. Put that weakness aside. Put that lazy ass bullshit aside and Google it. If you go, oh, I don't, I don't believe this guy. And then you didn't even research any of my talking points. Well, don't that, that just proves my point that you're the problem and not me. I've done that for myself and I'm continuing to do it every single day. And I love it. It's enlightening. It's beautiful. It makes me love life more. I used to be suicidal, believe it or not. And frankly, I, I couldn't love life anymore and I'm broke. But I love it though because I'm working on myself every day. And every day I get epiphanies that come to me telling me, oh man, yeah, I have messed up. But at the same time, I am a good person at the same time cultivate these things and there got to a point in time where I really just had to put my laziness aside because I have been lazy in the past just like everybody all this stuff that I'm saying I have been okay and I'm working out right now <clears throat> and it works but again don't take my word for it put your laziness aside do some damn research research this stuff man get into it because you'll realize that all the crazy magical worlds of the stories that you grew up reading is real people magic is real it's not fake because if it because look if you go if you dive into the world of magic okay the occult go okay is magic real like is that shit really real come on all right can't be real right well i don't know i don't know right but you know you know who believes in magic the people controlling the world you know <clears throat> there's a lot of celebrities out there who you can just see it you can just see it man they're witches they're they're magical people and there's a lot of people out there that you you won't realize that they were into magic until you put the pieces together and then you go oh damn hold on wait a minute that person was totally a witch or or you know what i mean like this magical person um and now I'm going to just go out here on a limb because I didn't see anything about Prince doing magical stuff, right? But when I look at Prince, that dude was a magical ass motherfucker, okay? That dude was one magical witchy ass dude. I would not be surprised if that guy did witchcraft, okay? You can do good witchcraft. You can do bad witchcraft. Look into magic, people. Aleister Crowley was affiliated with a lot of powerful people. And he was on the bad side, obviously. Okay, but it goes without saying that Blavatsky, Aleister Crowley, these people really believed in magic and they practiced it. And they were affiliated with high and powerful people. Look at uh, Marina Abramovich, okay, the spirit cooker. Okay, she took Lady Gaga under her wing. And then you can, you can, I mean, it's obvious. You just got to go dive into the research. And it will show you that... Hey, whether you believe in magic, these people do. And these people are high-level people. Okay, so whether you believe in it or not, these people do. You can dive into this world of the occult. And the more research you do, the more research you'll find out that this shit is real, man. People practice magic. You know what I mean? It's, it's a real thing. <clears throat> Again, don't take my word for it. But, like, it's real. Then it makes you go, oh, Harry Potter. Okay. Well, holy shit, you know what? That exists. There's dark magic and there's white magic. In Harry Potter, there's the bad guys. There's there's Voldemort doing all that dark shit. And then there's Harry Potter and Dumbledore and all of them doing all the good magic. Hate to break it to you guys, but if you actually go do the research like I'm suggesting heavily that you go do, instead of taking my word for it, you'll find out that all throughout all of history, including all the way in the Egyptian days, all the way in the ancient Sumerian days, all the way in the days of Atlantis and Lemuria, they all practice magic. Hate to break it to you, but it's a fact. Like, go do the research. And it's a beautiful, enlightening thing to find out that really there's so much more in the world. So much more in the world. Not to mention that my theory is that magic is just science that we haven't begun to understand. So there's a story that, it, this is an amazing story. Okay, it's a true story. Go do your research. There was a couple that went down to South America who they, they went to go see these ancient structures 
and I don't even remember where it was. I'm going to have to like find it somewhere, but I know this was a true story where down in South America, they found this place and they had a tour guide take them there. And there's this big giant cliff, a big wall. I mean, they walked up to it and they were at the bottom of it. And there's just this big giant rock face that they were at. And there were some indentations that were carved into the rock face where you kind of put your hands and then you kind of stick your head in. Right. And the tour guide said that him and his tribal culture have been um, keeping this a secret for thousands of years, for generations. And he said that what you do is you put your hands in and stick your head inside and you and you utter. All you have to do is utter a certain phrase in a certain way and you will teleport. You will be gone. It, it'll take you to another place. And somehow they convinced this guy to tell them, and he did. And the guy stuck his head in, uttered the phrase, and fucking disappeared. Straight up. Like five or ten minutes go by, and he comes right back. And then all of a sudden, he talks about how he teleported to this weird laboratory, and there were these alien beings there who told him all this crazy information. And then he came back. And, dude, there's thousands of stories talking about alien technology, magic, all of this crazy stuff. Well, in a utopia, who's not to say that in a, in a utopia, a real utopia, magic is real? Like, if there's true harmony on Earth, like, who's not to say that you can't live for thousands of years, you know, do magical rituals that create life and, and that could give you knowledge beyond your dreams, beyond your wildest dreams? But it starts within first. It starts by you understanding yourself, understanding who you really are. And if you begin to understand who you really are, you'll understand that you are that. You are a magical being. You are an alien. You are all of these amazing things that you only have yet to look inside first to tap into. Human beings have an amazing energy system that can heal cancer. It can make you live thousands of years. I mean, guys, if I'm if I'm right, isn't it worth exploring? Because if I'm not right, then hey, you now find out that I'm not right in whatever. Now you're exactly where you are in your miserable life and nothing happened. And if I am right, think about how your life can change. Think about the experiences that are possible. Wouldn't you want to know that? Wouldn't you want to step out of your lazy, boring life to find this stuff out? I mean, this is amazing, you know? I would, and I did. And I, I remember having crazy experiences sh proving this stuff to me. Hey, I don't got to be convinced. Like, I have this podcast. If you look at my earlier ones explaining why I'm doing this podcast, you'll understand that for me, I'm already I'm already done. I already know this stuff is real, and I live it every single day, baby. It's absolutely amazing. So, you know, I've gone on a little rant here, and it's been really amazing. Stay tuned for another episode where I go into certain world issues, how it all connects to prophecies, connects to conspiracy theories, connects to history, connects to world domination, connects to evil magic, rituals, connects to Hollywood, connects to uh, uh, pedophilia, connects to important people and adrenochrome, connects to the New World Order, connects to COVID, connects to bad guys, connects to the corrupt news media, connects to underground tunnels, and possible solutions in the following podcast. Stay tuned for that, everybody. Welcome to the apocalypse. This is Live Free Radio. Please stay tuned because I'm going to be playing some amazing music and showing some amazing fractal artwork that I've come upon and made myself. Welcome to the apocalypse, everybody. This is Live Free Radio. DJ Leonetico's here. Here we go. Everything and everything you see me, you see me, you see me. I found it.
into sound, a journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new value, and a new experience, stereophonic sound. <laughs> This is a journey, is a
sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new value, and a new experience. Stereophonic sound.
sounds like this. The only thing you really know is what you can put into words. Let's suppose I love some girl. Rapturously. And somebody says to me, would you really love her? Or how am I going to prove this? Well, say, uh, write poetry. Tell us all how much you love her. Then we'll believe you. So if I'm an artist and I can put this into words and convince everybody that I've written the most ecstatic love letters I've ever written, they say, all right, okay, we, we'll admit it. You really do love her. But supposing you're not very articulate, are we going to tell you you don't love her? Surely not. You don't have to be Heloise and Abelard to be in love.
the show please if you ever made it this far don't forget to like and subscribe i hate saying that but it's like sometimes i forget when i'm watching videos and so you know please support the channel the artwork that i produce and combine together to create an amazing experience and welcome to the apocalypse everybody dj leonetikos here have a wonderful day and enjoy the new utopia. The new age of Aquarius is here.